This story that I'm telling you is real life. They can go and look it up if they want to. We're actually in game here. This is our in game engine working. The island is 220 square kilometers in size. You can see that there's much more depth of content than there was in the original. Both graphical, as you can see behind me, and with actual density of objects within the landscapes. In the original game, there wasn't much cover. Now there are trees, buildings, even the holes in the ground where the player can use to hide, to, to take cover. There's a whole host of things. But remember, the artificial intelligence, the AI, will do the same thing. They will take cover, they will use the ground and the terrain and everything that we put in there, as well as you do. Battle takes place on a large scale, so it becomes vitally important to use these objects in very tact tactical ways. Thermal vision, for example. Thermal vision allows you to see through foliage, leaves. So there's no point hiding in a forest. Get down on the ground, get behind those hills. Make sure that people can't see you. <coughs> behind me, we're just zooming in through some of the landscapes that we were able to create, just so you get a field of vision, a view of what the land, what kind of playground we're gonna give you guys to play on. Here we're just going in towards a Russian village. It's one of the open environments that we have in Operation Flashpoint 2. You can see again the density of environment, the cover systems, everything that you've got to hide behind. Now one of the challenges that we faced was having to render all of this information onto your console or PC very, very quickly. We have the advantage of using the Ego Engine, which has already laid the foundations for us to be able to do this. We simply worked on those foundations. And now you can sort of see some of the lighting that we can do in the houses and in the game. Now, as the camera pans slightly more towards the left, you're going to see a house that's been partially destroyed. Now, the destruction system in Operation Flashpoint is both multi-stage and multi-segmented. A lot of games do this, I know, I know. But in Operation Flashpoint 2, if it's destroyed, it'll remain destroyed for the remainder of the mission. Again, this becomes a tactical minefield for the player. I mean, he has to think about what he's going to blow up. It may be a good idea to blow up that bridge in mission number one, but what happens if you need to cross that bridge in mission number four? It's gone. Think about it. So there's a real, real relationship between the player and the island, the player and the environment. There's dynamic night and day systems, and this is also linked to a dynamic weather system. So even if you're in the same place, with different lights and different weather, your tactics may have to change. There are hundreds of recognizable heads in the game. Hundreds. The reason for this is to make it easier for you to give orders to your team. You can recognize who he is. Ah, that's my radio guy. Oh, that's my machine gunner. I mean, we're back in game now. And spinning around this soldier, you can see what equipment he's carrying, what packs he has on. That's what he does. He's my radio guy. He's got a radio, or he's my rifleman. It's easy to give orders. Also, that means I can recognize if a person if an enemy is a soldier or the officer. If I shoot that officer, it's like taking the head off a snake. It's very likely that the enemy may not react as quickly or as well as they might have done with the officer in place. Now, of course, we use military personnel in our motion capture, but how much capture, motion capture we did is something else. I mean, we did interactions with vehicles. We did interactions with obstacles in the environment. In urban situations, kicking down a door, and of course with weapons. Just like in real life, here we have a soldier setting up a javelin. He has to carry that javelin, assemble it, mount it on his shoulder, power it up, aim it, and then fire it. Weapons have a sense of purpose, weight, not just a magic wand that you pull out of your pocket and fire bullets. Here are just some of the weapons. an MK-16, a Mac-16. Each bit of kit on these weapons has a function and is replicated within the game. It's this kind of authenticity, this attention to detail, that allows us to sell the experience of war to you guys, the players. To truly, really immerse players in this feeling that you are fighting a war.